welcome once again to uh, Axminster Tools Head Office here in Devon uh, for another Workshop Wednesday. Um, today we're going to be looking at the hollow chisel mortiser. Now the mortise and tenon joint is probably the, if not one of the most traditional ways of jointing two pieces of timber. The tenon, the male part, the mortise, the female part. Today we're going to focus on the mortise. Now there's many ways to cut a mortise. You can mark, cut by hand, a mortise chisel, a hand mortise chisel. You can drill out and still use a mortise chisel or traditional chisel to, to chip away and get the edges clean and square. You can use a machine that we're going to look at today, the hollow chisel mortiser. Now these machines have been around for decades, a long time. Quite a traditional style machine, um, maybe not quite as popular as they used to be. And, you know, the introduction of the Festival Domino has kind of taken some of this, uh, this machine's glory, if you like, um, but it still has a place in a joinery shop. Festival Domino is great, it's quick, it, it's strong, but if you want long, deep tenons, there's only so much strength that you can get from that, that domino. Uh, and you just might need that traditional style, that traditional look, uh, a through pegged tenon or, or something like that. Um, as I said, the traditional style um, hollow chisel uh, mortise machine. Now, what we've got, this is the key to that machine. It's the chisel and bit. This is the chisel, the hollow chisel, as you can see, and this is the bit, like a regular auger bit. We've got a sharp cutter, a center point to keep your central, a wide channel to take away the waste or draw the waste up, and then we've got the, the square, four-cornered, super sharp, sharp chisel. The bit runs through, window on the side to let the waste draw out. Now the setup of this on the machine is key. So that's what we're going to go through first. So Ben, if you can come in a little bit closer for me and we can look at um, this mortise, chisel and bit. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this one out. You can see I've got one fitted and squared in there at the moment. I'm going to take that out. Now you notice that I put a little block, and it's actually a block I'm going to be cutting into in a minute. I put that there just in case it, it well, when we undo this, it drops down. I don't want the bit to drop down and clash with my um, my nice cast iron table. You see the bit drop down there, but it's okay because it's just made contact with that. I really don't want any of my cutting tools to make contact with my cast iron tables. And there we go. That's the mortise, chisel and bit. And the setup, as I said of this, is key. Right. And that's what we're going to go through first. So we're going to place the, uh, the bit inside the chisel. We're going to offer it up inside the collar. Now there's a little sleeve inside the underside of here, which receives the shank of the, uh, of the chisel. Could two common sizes on this, three quarters of an inch, and 13 sixteenths, yes, old imperial sizes, I know. So we've got a three quarter shank, but with a 10 mil chisel on this one. But you know, in this country, we like to mix it up a bit with uh, measurements, I know. So what I'm gonna do, first thing, I'm just gonna push that up all the way in. I'm being super careful, these are very sharp. I'm not pushing up too, too hard. If, if you're worried about that, just push it up with a little block of wood there. Now this is, a really important point. When I'm pushing up, I'm gonna put a coin in between this little shoulder here and the machine. Two pence piece. Then I'm going to lock my bit into this kind of regular drill chuck. So like you're putting a normal drill bit into a pillar drill, I'll lock that in. And once that's secure, I can let everything go. Right. This isn't locked in, but what I've got is that little bit of movement that that coin has given me. Now that's 
exactly what I need because on your chiseling bit, what you don't want is to have the bit hard pushed up inside the mortise chisel. You need a little gap at the end there. And this helps with waste clearance. Too much of a gap and it's not gonna perform very well. As I said, hard pushed in, it, it struggles with waste clearance and you get a lot of metal to metal contact and you really could damage this and damage the motor on the machine. So the coin in there giving you this, this little gap. You might notice that we have a long slot cut in the side of your chisel. That's for waste clearance. Now what I like is I like it on the side, not on the front or the back, on the side, either on the right or on the left. I like it on the right if I'm traveling my workpiece towards the right. The left if I'm traveling my workpiece to the left. It's up to you which way around you have it, which way you prefer to work from right to left or from left to right. But the importance is that this is on the side and that will allow the waste that's drawn up by the bit to be ejected out of the window into the hole that you're creating. I will explain that further when we actually do some cutting. For now, what I'm looking to do next is get my chisel square to my back fence. All right? Now on this particular machine, the back fence is adjustable. It comes square out of the factory, but it might get bumped or banged, for instance, in its life. So you've got the ability to square it, but the important thing is, each time you change your, your mortise chisel for a different size, I mean these come in a multiple sizes, 6, 10, uh, 6, 8, 10, 12 or imperial equivalents, this machine will take up to a maximum of 16 mil, 16 mil in softwood, not necessarily 16 mil in hardwood. I'm going to draw this down, I'm actually just going to stop that from coming back up. We've got a lovely set of little stops. This, this whole machine has got little stops. We can stop the movement on the table for repeat cuts. We can stop the, the head from traveling back up for setup. What I've got is my chisel and I'm winding this table. You can see this table moves backwards and forwards. I'm going to wind this table till the fence just kisses the back side of my bit. I'm just gonna draw that bit down just a little bit further. There we go. And then when I get close, oops, wrong way, I'll start giving it a little wiggle. And I'm not drawing this back hard. I don't wanna pull this table so far forward. It starts to bend the chisel. There, so just wiggling. Yeah, there's no movement there now. Now I know the back side of this is square to the fence. So when I put my piece of material in, I know I'm going to get a straight square mortise. Right. Then once in that position, I'll make sure that it's pushed up to create the little gap that we discussed earlier. And I'll lock it in position. Simple little grub screw on the side locks the square chisel in place. Okay. Release this, just drop that table back out of the way a little bit, and there we are. That's your chiseling bit in position. Easy, eh? So, what I think I'll do now is set up to drop a mortise into here to receive this little stumpy talon. I'm going to give myself a center line first. Now I know not all mortises, oh, wrong way, not all mortises are. Um, Central, but this one we are. I'm going to drop a little center line down there. And I'm just going to measure the length of tenon. Okay, you can see there, that's where it's going to be dropped in. Stop and stop. That will be placed into the machine. Now, you see the clamping on this particular one. Um, there's not a lot of side to side shuffle or movement. To, uh, when you're mortising, but what there is, as you're coming back out of the cup, there's a potential for the material to lift up. Some machines have a little foot that sit on the top to stop this being lifted up. A lot of them, I quite like this, they have a diagonal clamp that holds your material down towards into this corner, in towards the fence and down towards the table, just to prevent lift when you're coming back out of the cup. 
I'm going to centralise first. Now, as I said, on these chisels and bits, you've got a centre point. And that's dead centre to everything here. Central all round. So that's easy to line up with my, with my centre line. I can move this table. I can draw this down and just eyeball it until I can plunge in and make tiny little points. There we go. That's just kissing that centre point nicely there. There we go. Right, you can see I've made little dots all the way along just without that auger point knowing that I'm dead centre to my line. I want to control how uh, the width of my tenon here and I've got these side stops so I'll do this one first I'll offer up my square chisel to my side stop and lock this collar in place lift it up travel the other way and do exactly the same thing offering the chisel up to my stop mark lock that off at this point what I've got is repeat repeat because often you're not just doing one mortise, you're doing, I don't know, making a table and you, you've got eight to do, see, two on each leg. So we've got the repeat, repeat, repeat. So what I think I'll do now is just do a, do a quick cut for you. Spectacles on, door is shut. Now let's just get a noise level on this machine. That little metal to metal rub is perfectly normal. Any noisier than that, and I might reassess what I've done. Have a look at my setup. But that's perfectly normal. Um, you can reduce that slightly sometimes by just putting a bit of dry lubricant on just that area. You see that's just soften that noise a little bit. And what this will do as well is, is help with um, resin buildup on the inside. So that's a a good thing to do is just to give it a little squirt in there now and again. So I'm going to do the first cut. Then are we are we close enough in? Can we get right really close? Right, so what we've got, I'm going to just touch it there. Look. So hopefully you can see that. What we've got, you can see the circular area where the augers come into place and remove the majority of material and you can see the sharp corner points from the chisel. You can kind of get to see how all this whole mechanism works there just by that area. When I'm doing my very first plunge cut I'm going to take my time, I'm going to work my way in because the waste really hasn't got too far to go. We'll see there. So there. And this is removing a lot of material. Alright, so I'll work my way in carefully. You imagine that waste is now a little, getting a little bit trapped in the window. It's got nowhere to eject out of. I know there's a bit coming out of the top. Alright. Alright. One thing I didn't do is set the depth. We don't sometimes want to go all the way through our material. Sometimes you need to put a backing board on, on this cast iron table. All right. So just for this instance, I'm going to just reset the, the little depth stop. Just lift that up. All right. Yeah. Then I'll do my second cut. Now what I'm looking to do is engage the center point each time. It's really just to try and take off a little skin, there's a, there's a chance everything can flex, particularly on the little thin uh, chisels and bits. I'm looking to engage that center point. Now you can see that the waist has got somewhere to go. So I'm a little bit more confident to work my way into the material Knowing that inside that chisel, the waste isn't going to get stuck, gummed up. I've hit that side stop now. It's bringing me right on my line. Okay. 
wait for the thing to stop. Now be very careful when you're going in for your material. Trust me, these points are sharp. They've caught the back of my hand uh, on a few occasions when, we, when I'm rushing, but... So what we've got is a lot of waste. There we go. A hollow mortise. In no time at all. The trick is, will it receive my tenon? Okay. Nice fit. We can see, you may be able to see on camera, I'm not sure. It's a little bit rough down the bottom. Okay, perfectly natural. And often that is blind, it's inside. So when you are setting, setting the depth of how much you want to go into your material, just allow a little bit more. If the length of your tenon is 30 mil, for instance, well, I'd be looking to set my depth of 35. So the actual length is 30, but allow 35, just to compensate for the little rough spots on the bottom. It's all blind, it's all inside, you don't necessarily see that. All right. So that's the kind of basics on hollow chisel mortising. Make sure that you get your, your back face square to your fence. The waste has got somewhere to eject to. Now, like I said, whether you work from left to right or right to left, it doesn't really matter. That's completely up to you. But what I think is important that, you know, if we imagine this now, and we're plunging into our, our mortise, when we get deep here, a lot of this window is then covered up and the waste can't escape as easily. It still can escape, but it doesn't escape as easily. And what happens is it gets stuck in this area. A lot of heat uh, builds up, friction. Um, it starts to go blue. It starts to get hot, starts to go brittle. And I've seen these chisels split here. And I've seen the auger bits snap. Um, and obviously the smaller you get, the more vulnerable you are uh, within, within that. So, uh, so yeah, so that's, that's basic setup on, on mortising. And, and don't forget the 2P trick. All right, just drop that in there in between the shoulder on the, the top side of your, your chisel and the, the base of your machine just in here. And that will allow that little gap just in this area to ensure that you've got waste clearance in the end and that this whole setting is just right. Something else that's really important is keeping these things sharp. Now, they don't look like the easiest things to sharpen, and to be honest, you'd be right. We'll look at the auger bit in a moment or two, but let's look at sharpening on one of these. On a mortise chisel, this dimension is everything. That's the important bit. Now, the temptation would be, Ben, can you, I'm down on the bench there, can you see? The yeah, temptation would be is to get some sort of lapping stone or get it on your sharpening stone and do this. Sharpen there. Trouble is with that, what, you're, what is sharpening? Sharpening is removing material. And if you're removing material in this area, it ends up narrower here than it does up here. And then eventually as you're plunging in, it can get stuck in the material. So, and you're actually re re reducing the diameter, uh, sorry, the outside size of this. So the way to sharpen this bit is really with a diamond cone set. Now they're relatively inexpensive, very simple to use. This will get locked in a vise. Eventually. Okay, something like that. That's it. Okay, I'm going to stand here, Ben. So if yeah. you can just come around this side and just get this angle. Mm -hmm. Right, what we've got, I mean, this comes as a, a set. You get a coarse one, like a coarse grit, and you get a fine grit. If it's just a touch up, just a tickle, which all sharpening should be, with little and often. Drop it in your cordless drill. Make sure you keep your drill slow. You might want to put it on the slow setting or 
what I do is just use the control on the variable. Because it's conical, it's cone shaped, it follows the conical shape inside the mortise chisel. It has this shape in here. There you can see that fits that beautifully. And what we're looking to do is retain that. We're look, not looking to twist, just feel and follow the shape that's in there. Keep it equal, and it won't take much. Oh, that's done, and it just brings back these corners. Now, you will end up with a very light burr here. And what I tend to do with that is exceptionally lightly with a fine grade. I know I said don't touch there, but all I'm doing is taking a burr off. I'm not actually removing material, it's very light. And you'll bring these points back in this sharp edge, this cutting blade here, back straight away. So it's a really simple way of sharpening what is a very difficult thing to sharpen otherwise. So that's the chisel, that's the, the, the difficult bit. The sh sharpening of the bit, well, it's really quite simple. I mean, sharpening drill bits can be tricky, we all know that. Um, this one, I think, is a little bit simpler because it's only got one cutter, so you haven't got two cutters to balance out and match. And what I tend to do, I'll, I'll stay away from the centre point. For the best part, I'll even stay away with it from this, this, centre, uh, the, this outside spur here. All I'm looking to do is just touch up the cutter. And again, you can, you can lock this in a vise to give you a bit more control. All right. And what I'm looking to do is follow the angle that's on the inside, the underside. I'm only going to go fine grade. I'm looking to follow that angle. What you can do if, it's, if you're unsure where that angle is at, good old trick with a lot of sharpening. I know it's a pencil, but you can black that out. All right? And that'll give you a guide to where you're actually, what angle you're at. Because you can see what material is being removed. You kind of get used to it and you get a feel for it, but just that little tickle there. And what I tend to do sometimes, depending on how blunt it is, is just tickle that top surface as well. And that brought back that edge. Like I say, I tend not to touch these two. Just give that a light touch. And that drops in there and we're ready to go again. Super sharp. Remember your settings as we've done before. And that's it. So, we are just about done actually. Hopefully you found that, um, found that useful, informative. Uh, as usual, if you've got any questions, please drop them, uh, drop us a line, let us know. Um, once again, thanks for watching and um, I look to see you uh, look to see you next Wednesday. Um, so take care, stay safe.